Don Robertson. Perfect. Uh, so how long have you lived in Dundas? I don't. Huh. How long have you been affiliated with Dundas or anything? I've been hanging around Dundas since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. I grew up in the village of Linden, which is now Flamborough, which is part of Hamilton, and everything gravitated towards Dundas. Linden's got 500 people, and we used to have a little arena that was like a barn I played in. And uh, I went to high school here, and uh, been selling real estate in, in town since 1974. Uh, owned the Collins Hotel for a little bit, uh, ran a sports bar there called Duck Sports Bar. And, uh, but continue to sell some real estate as well. So roots are pretty deep. Was fortunate enough to be citizen of the year in 2013. So apparently nobody else uh, put their name up that year. Uh, so so what, what high school did you go to? Went to Highland. Huh? And I'm so old that there was three of them in Dundas. And now there's one, Dundas Valley. Parkside and Dundas uh, hooked up, and district's been gone a long time. Went back to a public school, so the roots are are pretty deep here. Um, and I own and operate Com Choice Real Estate and have uh, since 1996. So uh, we're pretty deep in town, you know. Uh, operate the Dundas Real McCoys and have since uh, 2000, and uh, we've had some success. We've won. Nine Robertson Cups, uh, hosted two Canadian championships at JL Kreitmeyer Arena, and uh, have traveled across Canada f from Fort St. John, British Columbia, to Clarenville, Newfoundland, representing Dundas and the Ontario Hockey Association at the various Allen Cup tournaments. So we've been all over. We've, uh, we've traveled extensively, and we take the, um, you know, the... Uh, tradition of having Dundas hockey with us and we take it to heart and try and represent uh, the town the way they would expect and I think we've done that. How did you uh, first get involved with the Real McCoys? The Real McCoys um, started back in the late 70s in uh, Rockton, Ontario and um, I was refereeing at the time, I actually refereed some of their games and it was around 1980 um, I uh, smashed my foot and was finished uh, refereeing Junior A and Senior A hockey at the age of 23, if somebody does the math. And uh, they asked me to be the general manager. So we did that and we won a couple Ontario championships and then we moved up to senior. And uh, Archie McCoy uh, owned and sponsored the team and then um, there was a parting of the ways and he came down and bought the Dundas franchise. He bought the um, Dundas Hamilton Tigers. Or, yeah, that's what they were. And they were the merchants from from way back. And, and we can talk about the history of the Mountain View Dairy and the Dundas merchants. But So it evolved into that. And then the team turned into the uh, Flamborough Mots Clamatos. And we went to Brantford and won a Canadian championship in 87. Ironically, beating out the Dundas Real McCoys. So you asked me how I got involved. Then the following year, the league had folded. And... Archie and, had approached me and asked me if I would uh, put a team together to represent Dundas at the national championships because there was no league. So we did that. And uh, after that, it, the senior hockey was done from 87 pretty much till 2000 when we started them back up again. So how, like, how did it fold? You said it folded. Up. The league folded. Like, how does that happen, sorry? There's no teams to play against. I, I, I stepped down in Brantford as a general manager just because I was, you know, the real estate business was growing. I didn't have time. So Brantford was gone out of a five-team league. Thunder Bay left. And so there was nowhere for Dundas and Georgetown to play. So hence the following season, we still went to um, uh, Charlottetown PEI and represented Dundas and and got beat uh, uh, four games to three in that championship, and they went on to play for the Allen Cup. That was the Eastern Canadian Championships. In 1986, um, the Dundas Real McCoys won the last Hardy Cup, which was a double-A championship across Canada. And the Dundas Merchants had competed for the Hardy Cup for years and years and years um, with with no success in winning it. I mean, they 
the Merchants were a successful franchise and did and did well, but they never ultimately won a Canadian championship until the real McCoys did in um, in '86. So the Merchants were around, I think, from about '64 to 1980, and then it kind of morphed into the senior league. So there was a readjustment. It was called intermediate hockey. Um, there was intermediate uh, B hockey in Dundas for a bit, and then the Mountain View Dairies. There's team. There's a big picture of them in the arena, um, and there, you know, there's some history there. And uh, I'm not old enough to be able to recite it all, but I mean, there is a great deal of it there. So it's senior hockey's been around a long time. I mean, the reality of senior hockey and its relationship to Dundas. Hockey started um, through the Ontario Hockey Association in 1891. And it's always an interesting story because that at, in 1891 they first played for the Stanley Cup. And about in about 2000 and uh, probably 14, no, 13, we played the Kenora Thistles for the right to advance to the Allen Cup. Kenora Thistles were the last amateur team in 2007 to win the Allen Cup or Stanley Cup and then because some of the teams were paying their players the Allen, or Stanley Cup was supposed to be for amateur hockey and Hockey Canada then had taken over um, and been built all through men's hockey and um, so John, Ro John Robertson decided that uh, they weren't going to play for the Stanley Cup any longer. That would now be a pro league. Hence the Stanley Cup that we're all familiar with that the Toronto Maple Leafs won way back in the 60s before ever anybody was born. Um, so Sir Montague Allen said, you know what, I want to put the, I want to set up a cup for the Dominion Hockey Championship because it was the biggest championship in the world. What, he, uh, what went on prior to him doing that is Lord Grey had talked to Hockey Canada and said, you know, I'm thinking about putting a cup up for challenge and championship, and I'll let you know. Uh, Sir Montague Allen scootered in with a, a little bowl about that big, and it was the Allen Cup. And Lord Grey had to end up putting his cup up for the football championship for the Dominion of Canada, which is... Now a little higher profile than the Allen Cup, so that's some of the history. But it's, I it's always uh, interesting when you talk about minor hockey and people, you know, they minor hockey is wonderful. Junior hockey is a tradition in our country. But I, being a senior hockey, somewhat of a nut and perhaps a historian, I always talk about the fact that when you see when hockey was created and started, did you see those pictures with little kids on the ice, or are they men? And they're all men. Some with fedoras, some with ties on, lots with long coats on, playing with a wooden hickory stick for a hockey stick. So it really did, all of hockey evolved from men playing the game, whether they were strapping blades on their boots or however they were doing it, and it's transformed. And now we still play for, when we play for the Allen Cup, the world's oldest national hockey championship, which started in 1891. And we're proud to do that. We're proud that Dundas is in the league. The Hamilton Tigers won the Allen Cup in, I believe it was 1819. Um, and that's right around the time where they had an NHL team that ended up being sold to New York, which turned into the Rangers. So Dundas has a pretty, pretty strong history here. There's been some fabulously well-known characters play the game for us, whether it's Bill Searle and... Uh, Gil Air coaching and Irv Lebo and uh, being the general manager. Those guys were around when I was refereeing them in the uh, late 70s and early 80s. I remember going to the Market Street Arena and seeing tremendous crowds there on Friday nights. Uh, in part because you couldn't watch hockey on television. You could only watch the Toronto Maple Leafs on Saturday night and maybe catch a weekday game on CHTV. There was no TSN and Sportsnet and so on. So it was a gathering place and the Market Street Arena was and still is an absolute wonderful facility and I'm very happy that one of the last things that uh, city, the town council did before amalgamation 
was grant us the ice time so we could restart a senior team in 2000 and they renamed uh, the Market Street Arena after J.L. Greitmeyer. J.L. Greitmeyer was um, a fabulously successful man in our community. He was involved in the starting of the golf course, uh, paid off the uh, debt when the new arena was built because nobody had any money and he, I understand he still got repaid but somebody had to write the check and he stepped up and did it. So we've kind of, I think through our senior team and our travels across Canada and bringing two Canadian championships to Dundas, uh, have raised the profile of J.L. Greitmeyer, rightfully so. So the real McCoys, I mean, first year in the league, everybody kind of said, what are your plans? Like, do you think it's going to take two or three years to build a winner? And I don't ever ran winning teams, so I wasn't really sure what the kerfuffle was. So we joined the league and won the league championship and went to the Allen Cup in our first year. It was in Sarnia, Ontario. So it was a four-team tournament. And then in 2003, we went down there, thought it was kind of cool. That's how they did it as a tournament format. We hosted in 2003. We didn't have any on-ice success because it's, it's a very difficult tournament to win. We went to a whole bunch of Allen Cups since then, and in 2014, um, at J.L. Greitmeyer, in overtime, on TSN, who did a fabulous job of capturing the Valley Town. They had cameras up on the peak. They went through downtown, very similar to what Hockeyville did for the, for the town. And we filled the J.L. Greitmeyer Arena and beat Clarenville Newfoundland in overtime to uh, win Dundas's first Allen Cup. And we're pretty proud. Sorry, can't get in a lot of it. Is there anything you want to touch upon? Well, I think we should talk about um, the Blues. Yeah, I would love to hear more about the Blues. Only referee the Blues didn't play. I was a Flamborough kid, and uh, wasn't many of us that were asked to play for the Dundas Blues. It was that was okay, um, but they've been around since '59. And when I was refereeing, I refereed the, when I refereed the Dundas Blues. They were a junior B team, and they were playing against the Hamilton Kilties and so on and so forth. But there's been so many good people involved in the Blues. Um, Steve Agler's had his hand in it for seemingly forever after he played there and played for the Merchants and uh, keeps his hand in making sure we have junior hockey in Dundas. The real McCoys and the, and the junior C's have a wonderful working relationship. Uh, we basically share a dressing room and, and shower area and uh, they had a, you know, they've had some tremendous success. Winning a junior C championship in this province is not for the faint of heart. The Junior C Division is the largest division within the Ontario Hockey Association. So just to win the league championship is great. To go on and win a Schmaltz Cup is something that's very difficult. But, you know, they do, they do a lot of wonderful things and they, and they give the kids in the Dundas Minor Hockey, you know, something to look forward to. Maybe I can play for the Junior C team someday and maybe I can ultimately play for the Real McCoys. So it's they've done well and they should be proud and to have an operation that's been running since 1959 in our community is not to be sneezed at that's a quite an accomplishment we're pretty proud that we started it back up in 2000 and we continue to operate and have success but um the blues should be proud there's a lot of guys that have played there that have gone on to play in the ohl and have tremendous success so you know, I think it's fair that we talk a little bit about the uh, caliber of play of the Real McCoys. Uh, we've had uh, a litany of former National Hawk guys that played in the NHL, the play. We had half a dozen that played in the NHL on our team. Our player coach, Jay McKee, uh, played over 800 games for the Buffalo Sabres. Um, Rick Vive played for us in 2003 Allen Cup. Uh, for those that remember, was captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs, scored 50 goals for them three years in a row. No one's ever done that since. And he was a real McCoy. We've honored his sweater in the uh, J.L. Greitmeyer Arena. So there's been all kinds of former NHL guys, and in essence, it's played at the minor pro hockey level. Uh, the year we won the Allen Cup, I think we had two guys that hadn't played pro hockey on the team, to give you some idea of the caliber of it. Um, 
three or four former NHL goaltenders. Mike Mole, uh, who was in the Islander system, was a, basically a star in the American League, was MVP of the Allen Cup. Um, so the caliber of play is pretty high. And we get people that come into our community and we participate in the Cactus Festival Parade and do different things in the community. We do a food drive for Salvation Army. We do a teddy bear toss for the Christmas Tree of Hope. We had a fundraiser this past season for breast cancer research. Um, the things that we try and do, we every ticket we sell uh, at the gate, a, a, a portion of it goes to the Spec Kids, uh, which is ultimately funded by the Hamilton Community Foundation and sends kids off to summer camp. Um, Bob Kemp Hospice, we did a fundraiser and awareness night for them. And we really think you got to be part of the community. And if we're not going to be part of the community, then we don't want to run the hockey team because it's really important that we do that. And our players understand that, whether they're driving in from Burlington or they're driving in from Hamilton or they're right here from Dundas or wherever they're from. They, they One of the first lessons they learn is this is about giving back to the community. And if you're not prepared to do that, then you can't. You you don't have that privilege of being on the Dundas Real McCoy hockey team. And you know we we don't win every year, uh, but we went to 11 straight finals, so we win a lot more than we lose. Why do you think you get such high caliber uh, players kind of gravitating here? Is it just uh, passion? Passion. Yeah, we're already doing that now. Um, my philosophy since I started being a general manager and, and started bringing guys that have played in the American League and the NHL in is if somebody tells me about a guy that might, that's home or he's retired, my philosophy is I'm going to give him a chance to say no. And it's very surprising how many people don't say no. Uh, one time we had uh, three, three guys that won a Calder Cup in Cape Breton. And uh, they were the Oilers fr uh, farm team at that time. And they won s 16 straight playoff games. 16. We had a goalie. And um, they, they bring a winning attitude. They, one came from Burlington. One drove in from Toronto. Wayne Cowley was a goalie. Came in from Toronto. Billy McDougall, who um, played for us on and off for three years, holds a record in the American Hockey League that I don't think will ever be broken. In 16 games, he had uh, 26 goals and 26 assists and 52 points. And as Wayne Cowley, who was undefeated, a goaltender in the American Hockey League went undefeated, 16-0, and 0, would sit around the dressing room and say, do you think I could get one vote for being MVP of the playoffs? Nope. McDougal got them all. So, so, so we've had some interesting stories like that come. Tom Searle played for us. He, he played for the Real McCoys before he went on and played pro. Tom played pro for me in Brantford when we operated the Brantford Smoke. He's Bill's son. Uh, Bill Searle played. So both uh, both the sons played. Tom went on to play for Austria and uh, played in the Olympics for Austria. Good Dundas kid playing for Austria in the Olympics. It's uh, how they get passports and make them eligible is a rather interesting process, I'm sure, but he did it and uh, played part of a season when he retired. So, you know, the Searles, the Aglers, there's been lots of great names involved in hockey in Dundas. And one of probably the largest off-ice feats related to hockey was when Dundas was crowned Craft Hockeyville. And Leslie Watson um, started the initiative uh, the year before, actually, by having posters and, on uh, Bristol board saying, you know, vote for Dundas for J.L. Greitmeyer for Hockeyville. And uh, the next year she ran into Barry Forth, who's uh, creative marketing, and that's what he does for a living now. And the two of them just drove this thing as hard as they could. And, you know, with some media contacts that I had, we were able to to drive it locally and make it a bit of a, you know, we, we wanted to broaden the, the vote cat, uh, catchment to Hamilton, Stony Creek, Caledonia, and we did. And uh, those two uh, were honored as Citizens of the Year for their accomplishments. And we played an NHL game, exhibition game, at J.L. Greitmeyer. 
and um, there's a lot of people proud of that and well they should be I think it was 2010 so it's pretty cool and they gave us a hundred grand uh, to which now we're in the process of trying to make some improvements at JL Greitmeyer with that money along with some additional money and spruce the old uh, the old girl up a little bit and started a uh, Dundas Sports Wall of Fame and uh, there are inductees now that are honored in, in the arena and if we can finally get through all the hurdles and put the addition on the second floor above the uh, lobby and hopefully when somebody's looking at this this lobby that that room will be 10 years old but uh, there's going to be a place to, to honor the um, different various people that have made contributions to Dundas and it'll be interactive we'll be able to walk up and hit a button and and um, you know look up what Tom Searle did and when he did it and um, Don Knight who's already in there who won a Canadian figure skating championship so um, those are some more initiatives that uh, that, are, that a building like J.L. Greitmeyer is it's really a community gathering place you know there's uh, there's always um, uh, a fish fry there there's um, there's rib nights there there's lobster nights there and and uh, but I you know when people say to me, do you think the real McCoys have any impact on the uh, community of Dundas? And I said, I'd like to think we do. I mean, we play at, at this juncture, we play 12 home games in the regular season, and then we play playoffs. So on a pretty regular basis, you know, we're drawing anywhere from 400 to 900 people uh, to one place in that building on a Friday night. And I always ask other people, can you tell me any other organization that is gathering together those numbers on a consistent basis? I mean, if you ask one of the service clubs and they can get 700 people to a dinner, a fundraising dinner in J.L. Greitmeyer, they're ecstatic. And they do it once a year. We do it a lot of times a year. And we give back to the community because that's what we think we should do. So not only do we carry the banner of Dundas, we, we do it with pride and contribute back into the community. So that's what the real McCoys are, and we're happy to be associated with uh, the Junior C team and Dundas Minor Hockey, which is one of the most successful hockey operations in the city of Hamilton. And they should be proud. They've been producing players for the Junior C team and the real McCoys and off on to OHL and professional careers. It's Dundas is a real hockey hotbed and should be proud of themselves. The entire community should be. Um, Run out of gas, what else you need? <laughs> you can edit this, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's my primary job. Okay. Um, well, yeah, do you have more on that nope. sheet that you want to discuss? No. Nope. Um, I was going to just kind of go into, because I heard you say you uh, just kind of moved ship from sports fit. Yeah. Talk about yourself. And just, I heard you, you owned the Collins for a bit. Yeah. Was that, what, what, what happened? Like, how did you decide to make that purchase? Uh, I read the newspaper, the Collins Hotel closed. And, uh, you know, I was busy selling real estate, which is what I've been doing forever, since 74. And some friends of mine used to own it. And I hadn't been in there in years, and it turned into a strip club. And which is a long way from what Barney Collins, I think, planned. I mean, years and years and years ago, it was the place to go for a Sunday dinner in the back, and where, which is now the Collins Brew House. And so I went down and said, um, why don't you guys take it back? So we sat around, had a couple beers, and by the time we were all done, they said, well, if you think it's such a great idea, why don't you be our partner? They made a couple of phone calls. The owners weren't in default. Joe and Brian, Joe Lapsovich and Brian Lloyd had the second mortgage on it. They weren't in default, so they couldn't foreclose. The town had shut them down, apparently, because they hadn't paid their taxes. And uh, the guys were fighting with the town because probably over some, I don't remember, some zoning bylaw of strippers being in downtown Dundas, which is generally not considered the biggest tourist attraction that you could, you could uh, bring in. So Don Cherry's was doing very well. And I had uh, de I decided, I said, okay, we'll do it. I'll, I'll shut down the, real the residential portion of my real estate practice and just do commercial. And I went in and ran it. And so we called it Ducks at the Collins. Um, 
it was full of sports memorabilia. Uh, because it was uh, in 1987, hot off the heels of winning a national championship with the Flamborough Monster Models in Brantford, Bobby Hull's sons had played, Stan Jonathan had played for us, a whole bunch of ex-NHLers. So we had a golf tournament for Tim Horton Children's Foundation, and next thing you know, you know, there's lots of cele sports celebrities coming in and out. Dick Beddoes from CHCH would wander in. Paul Osbaldison, the place kicker for uh, the Thai Cats, worked the bar in the winter time. Uh, Ken Hobart lived with me. He was a quarterback of the Thai Cats, so he was always around helping out. So really, was a sports bar, and so we morphed it into that. And then I was getting a little tired of it. You know, wanted uh, the real estate was going to start demanding. So we sold the real estate, and then we just moved the uh, sports bar to the back. And uh, ultimately, I was uh, we were in the process of selling it to a couple of my managers. And I went off and started a pro hockey team, still selling commercial real estate, pro hockey team in Brantford called the Brantford Smoke. So it was Brantford's first ever pro hockey team. So back into the hockey business a little bit there and uh, won a league championship our second year in. So got beaten in the finals the year before, so winning is contagious. Um, but the Collins, you know, we did a lot of cool things. We opened the windows back up in the dining room. We brought in a chef. We tried to bring it back to the glory years of a respectable dining room. And it was a tough road to hoe. The stripper stig stigma was a tough one. And uh, we did get over it, though. You know, you start bringing Bobby Hall in and a litany of celebrities and tie cats and everything else. It became a family place, which is what we wanted. We wanted kids involved, and that's, you know, um, anybody can keep milk and beer cold, but your food has to be good. So we had good food, and now it's, it's carrying on. It was and still is the oldest continuously operated hotel in Ontario. Started in 1841. So that's kind of a cool little thing to have in your back pocket. And the owners now are, are doing, by all accounts, a wonderful job, and ironically, are big sponsors of the Dundas Real McCoys. I'll ask you actually about the, the Brantford Smoke just to learn more about it. So, how, like, how did you get started with the Brantford Smoke? Obviously, you already had some experience. Yeah, well, the, uh, the Brantford Smoke, um, there was a couple guys in the U.S. trying to start a minor pro league. They were in vogue back in the, the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and they called the Brantford Civic Center and said, we'd like to target your building to run a minor pro franchise. You know anybody that would own it or run it for us? And the arena manager was there in 87 when we were uh, running the uh, Mods Clamados out of there. And then they called me. I had a couple of meetings with them, talked to some investors, and said, do you guys want to try this? So we did. And um, first year we got the affiliation, a brand new league. But, you know, contacts go pretty deep in the hockey business. And the first year we got an affiliation with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And the second year Bill Waters became the assistant GM and uh, became a good friend. And so for the next two years we had uh, an affiliation with the Toronto Maple Leafs. At that point in time it was time for me to get back in full time to real estate and uh, you know redevelop what I had done. Again, I was still doing lots of commercial, but the hockey for me had run its course. It was fine. We'd won a championship. We went to the league finals again, but you know that they were starting to expand into the states and I didn't have the time or the interest in going on bus trips for 12 or 14 hours and thinking somebody else could do that. So, uh, you know, back to uh, you know, in 96, uh, opened up ComChoice Real Estate and, and uh, you know, had always had a brokerage, but it was time to get into mainstream and today we have the biggest real estate firm in Dundas. So we like to win and we like to do a good job and we like to contribute to the community. How did you get involved in real estate in the first place? Like real estate, it's, uh, it's, that's an interesting question. Um, I was, as a kid, I played junior hockey in St. George for one year, and, he, and I was refereeing. And I quite liked refereeing. And uh, realized that if I was going to move up, which I planned to do, uh, as soon as I was too old to play junior hockey, I, the OHA got a hold of me and said, um, 
you don't have to wait till you're too old to play junior if you want to come in and be a linesman. So I said, okay. So that sounded pretty cool. And, and I was reading the Hamilton Spectator, and there was an ad in there that said, uh, the ad said, make as much as you want, work whenever you'd like. I got to think, well, that sounds like something I'd like to do. Well, I was still in high school. So I went down and interviewed um, with Montreal Trust and said, I want to sell real estate. He said, why? And I said, because I'm going to be refereeing junior A hockey shortly, and I need a job where I can leave to go to Peterborough at 2 o'clock if need be, or Kingston, or London. So I couldn't, couldn't have a 9 to 5 job. I was too young to have enough experience and enough seniority to be able to take off and do what I wanted to. So because I wanted to referee, and the goal was to referee in the National Hockey League, if I hadn't smashed my foot into a bunch of pieces and taken some bones out of it, um, everything was working rather well. So I got into the real estate industry because I needed the flexibility to be a hockey referee. So that happened in 1974 when I was getting out of Highland. I, um, enrolled at Mohawk College, and it was the first time it had ever been a three-week course. Now it's multiple weeks. It used to be a two-day course to get your real estate license. So I signed up and went through the Salt, F Salt Fleet campus, and you know what you look like when you're 17 years old. So I walked in the first day of class, and it's, you know, there's a bunch of what I thought were old guys in there, not near as old as I am now. And the teacher said, why are you here? I said, because I want a referee. Is this a real estate course? I said, that's okay. When I sell real estate, I'll be able to go referee whenever I want. So that afternoon, he said, you know, you have to be 18 to be licensed. Is there anybody 18, not 18 years old here? So I knew where they were at. And he said, when are you 18? I said, next Monday. So I got my real estate license when I was 18. And uh, went back to see Bill Moore at Montreal Trust um, after I got my real estate license. And worked for Department of Highways in the summer because I needed at least two more dress shirts and one more sports jacket and a new tie before I got in the business. So I had to build up some equity. And uh, after Labor Day, I walked into Montreal Trust and met with Bill Moore and said, the girl said, can I tell him who's calling? I said, sure. So I told him, you know, it's Don Roberts. I was pretty proud to be me there, pardon me. He comes in and says, Don, he said, what can I help you with? I said, well, remember back in, like, May last year, I come down to your office. Oh, right, he says, you want to take the real estate course. Okay, well, he says, uh, I'll give you the Mo Mohawk College number. I took it out of my pocket. I said, well, I've already passed all the courses. I, I just wanted to start. He went, really? I said, I still got a job, right? But you're going to hire me, he says. Yes, I am, son. You come with me. So we went down and had a coffee and talked, and... He said, you want a referee? I said, I do. So the refereeing got me in real estate. The uh, real estate kept me in hockey. And next thing you know, you're running a team and doing it forever. So, yeah, I've been involved with the OHA since I was 18 years old. So, And the real estate business has been very kind. Dundas is a fabulous place to uh, have an office. Um, proud of it. Uh, I remember, um, I guess we wouldn't compete, but Jack Mills um, and his son Jim running their office down there, and uh, now it's Jim and Darlene Mills, and really the only Main Street real estate offices in Dundas, so it's fun. It's nice when you like your competition, right? I mean, it's not like hockey, it's competition, but it's very friendly, and, you know, I mean... Uh, my office on uh, King Street is right across the road from where Bob Hunt Real Estate was back in the late 70s. Building I'd like to buy and put my company in, but that doesn't happen yet. So that's the real estate. That's uh, where the Bramford smoke comes. And again, there's always been the connection with real estate. Never stop. Just kind of change it a little bit. And now I'm in the business of, uh, you know, we do a lot of rural stuff. We do a lot of stuff in Dundas. Um, and we've got some nice young agents that come in and it's kind of fun to work with them.